Yeah, this is the countdown. Welcome to the next episode of is it the Cathode Ray podcast or is it Lewis and Nuthead podcast? <laughs> right, yeah. So I think that after what is there is twenty five episodes, maybe we'll just retire the Cathode Ray podcast and switch it to Lewis and Nuthead. Do you think <laughs> do you think the algorithm will have a problem with the word <laughs> nuthead? It's gonna love it. Oh, yeah, I hear it loves that sort of stuff. We could, um, I mean, I made up that little logo, uh, the, the oh retro channel on, on Twitter, made that cool thumbnail of us talking. We were talking about desoldering caps and it sounded pretty dirty. And then it came to my mind that we sounded like Beavis and Butthead. Like, uh, uh, us two idiots here. <laughs> the nerdiest Beavis and Buttheads. Yeah, that's what happens when you watch yeah. Mike Judge stuff growing up. Yeah, shout yeah, out yeah, to yeah, Mark, so- Mark from the retro channel for putting that little thing. I was trying to figure <laughs> out at first, I was like, were we talking about degaussing? And then I was like, oh, yeah, you're right, desoldering. I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> so that's cool. That's actually, well, we could get like, a, I was going to do some some graphics redesign soon as well, like maybe to get a, an artist to do either at least the logo better, because I just used the font, or even like a character character drawing of you and I as, as Beavis and Beavis, Butthead. Yeah, that's brilliant. I was about to put out a tweet this morning and see if anybody that was like, Followed me actually was good enough to submit something like that for uh for a show or for at least a thumbnail i think that here's what we should do all right mm-hmm. okay um let's do this we'll run some polls let's let's i'll run a poll on my channel you run a poll on your channel and we'll just see if nobody responds then we'll just forget about <laughs> the segment but maybe we'll get an overwhelming response of people who would enjoy it to be called the lewis and nuthead show because that's I don't know good. something like a I used segment. to get called nuthead, you know, <laughs> back back when I worked in the construction days, they would call me every blasphemous oh, yeah. term involved with nut, er, <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> so I so guess yeah, if you're uh, if you're watching and like you you're a graphic designer or something, look, we'll, we're not asking to do nothing for free. Don't worry, people will get compensated. That's all good. Uh, I've got a couple here, graphic designers that I can turn to as well. Let's see, maybe not the whole, I mean, Cathode Ray podcast, we're going to keep it, but is it a segment, thumbnails? <laughs> we're going to use this somehow, somehow. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a Thumbnails, thing. yeah, thumbnails probably cool. Yeah, maybe I'll add it to the next thumbnail for this episode. Yeah. Whew, so we're, uh, we're going to go through the things that we have been doing this week. I've been doing some stuff, getting the working on the lag test, I got myself a new monitor, we're playing with my PS3. Um, yeah, so what have you, you just been working in the shop, still getting the backlog from the museum, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny. I was, uh, I was thought I was caught up and then I've been talking so much that I haven't been doing a great job of exactly examining my schedule on a daily basis. So I thought I had caught up to the point where I was, I was looking around. I was like, okay, I've got, you know, I've got pretty much caught up. I can plan out this next week and then I'll be done with everything. What about the next week's worth of business? And I didn't realize like the mm-hmm. next day I had people bringing five different CRTs in and uh, I was like, oh, I, I guess I forgot about you guys. I'm sorry, I, but you're <laughs> welcome. And so I, I've got new things in and I was hustling. Yeah, you know, I've been hustling mm-hmm. through. Uh, so I got another 2030 was one of the load recently and a couple yeah. of these cool ikigamis 15 inch which i have oh yeah you had with two today. of them mm. yeah and i haven't messed with them really at all this version of them these are more modern ones i believe they might be ones that can go up and do like 480p and uh digital mm. stuff so we'll see but they're not working so that's the thing um okay. but anyway i go through and i restore this 2030 it's looking nice and uh i'm wearing my beach wear hawaiian official oh, beach sharp. wear like the rock here from the old days <laughs> and we uh because because i I, well, I got done and i was testing the machine i was letting it run i feel pretty good i came out and saw brutus in this area where we're sitting mm. and i look over and i see a little puddle and i'm like oh yeah maybe <laughs> dog went to the bathroom i look oh no no it's not that so we had a good amount of fast rain come in and when that happens occasionally i will get uh, under this wall, water will come out into the basement, and it doesn't come out like mm. a schmuck load or ton. It's like it comes out enough to make it a problem, and I, I knew it, so I've designed my setup to be you know six, eight inches above water line in here. <laughs> it's just every time it happens, I have to move stuff around away from the puddle, clean up the puddle, and dry out the towels, and you know, I got big industrial fans 
So yeah, you think you can I do something about it? Like, life. Yes, you can. But see, the problem is, is it's all behind this lovely wall right here. Okay. So I have to rip out all my lovely old school 1960s <sighs> wood, and I don't think I could get it back up. But that's the problem. It's behind this wall, and it's uh, so it's either like do something behind the wall or whatever. Um, and it's it happens. I, this is the second time it's happened since I've lived here. So okay. I think it probably happens three times a year. Um, uh, all right. As long as it's not permanent so, damage then on the floor yeah, or something. Yeah, nothing's keep an eye wrong. On it. Like, I know I got a ton of electronics and stuff in here and even everywhere, mm. but it's all it's all literally set up to be ready for this because uh, I, it's just an inconvenience. So the problem was is I was trying to hustle through and get some more work done, but I just spent a couple hours dealing with that last okay. night. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, so just that, you know, um, I've got I've got that monitor. I'll do the Ikigamis today. I've got a ton of- Actually, I was going to ask you about the Ikigamis. So you mentioned that- oh, We saw the picture of them. There's two of them that are very similar that have come in. Yeah. And how does that work? Uh, now, you said they both, they both don't work. Is that right? Yes. So, and I have not even tested them. I don't know. I mean, sometimes people say things don't work, and mm. it's because they don't know how to operate them, or they're locked in some kind of mode- like if it was lined up yeah. in a sequence of monitors, it could be locked in a mode where it could only be accessed from an outside control unit. Okay, mm -hmm. like a control board. And yeah, they pull yeah, this sure, monitor. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's locked in like that, so you got to figure out how to get it unlocked. So I, I, I haven't turned these on yet. Um, we'll see. Uh, the, the uh, owner didn't really know either. He just. Mm -hmm. uh, he said he got them and wanted to see. So I told him I'd take a look at them, see what I can do. You know, if um, they look newer, they're after 2000. Okay. So there's a good chance that I could just hopefully get them running, clean them up, and get them decently calibrated. And nothing probably will need deep servicing like the 2030, which is from 1990, you know, early 90s. Uh, yeah. So That's it's what I was going to ask about the, the Ikigamis when you mentioned that, um, you know, I mean, you know the monitors, but you haven't worked on that much and they're not working. And this is one of those interesting cases for you where, I mean, someone's still got to ship it. You've still got to do a bit of work. Like it's it's one of those ones where I guess you've communicated with the customer and said, look, yeah. I'll do my best, but we can't guarantee. But, you know, there's some sort of rela no, relationship. They know you. They know you'll put in a genuine effort. So, you know, yeah, you can try it. I mean, just to give you some information, like from that angle, this mm. is like a repeat customer who's mm. been um, like on the uh, on my Patreon repair club for what's going on years now. So they've done business with me in the in the past. They always drive their own things in. So mm. it's a, it's usually a situation where people will, uh, you know, they'll try to make some kind of a trip about it. For some reason, they come east or north or south. And along yeah, that yeah, yeah. route, they will try to drop off. And then, like, this guy organized dropping off this week, and then he's coming tomorrow to pick all these up. And so if I can't get the Ikigamis going or working, that's just like, hey, I looked at them. Here's a small fee for my time, and uh, this is what I found out. I don't think I can get them working, you know, based on this, or it would take me an extremely right long time to get them working possibly. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where you go from there, or you get them working, and then you kind of just do as much as you have available in the time slot. But this would be, yeah, that a lot of times I'll have people that are, you know, repeat people. They A lot of CRT fans don't just have one. I mean, unless mm. you're a smaller spot. <laughs> so <laughs> A lot right, of people yeah. are like you or I or Bob even, right? He's got so many. And they're usually like, hey, I need to get three or four done. And then it becomes way more economical to, like, think about a trip as opposed mm. to trying to ship them because uh, that's another thing I've got happening today anytime now that ten dollar CRT I bought from eBay is supposed to show up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. so we'll see we'll have some unboxing I'll do a quick unboxing video because it's been a while and we'll how see big how was much. that monitor it's a 13 inch okay. CRT Reasonable. and it's a com it's a completely it's like the clone of the Commodore uh, 1701 or 02 monitor mm. that has, uh, you know, the Commodore video mode in the back, okay. but the JVC does not have, it just has composite. Okay. 
Hmm. So I'm going to see if that's like something where I could easily just repopulate dead spots on this board and turn it into the Commodore version. Oh yeah. So I've got all the I've got three of those Commodore monitors here right now yeah. that aren't going anywhere. So I could reference that. So I thought, yes, I've been looking for one of these and ten dollars. Yes, no one else. It's been. a good price. Was it was it ten dollars? What was the shipping cost? It was additional thirty four. So okay. A total of $44. Wait, no, I think it was $30 and I had to pay taxes. So okay. I paid 44 total, which I can't imagine this guy being able to box that CRT and ship it for $44. And not only that, he has to pay eBay. And so he's losing like 20% of that. So he's mm. literally getting like 30 bucks. So I'm like, oh gosh, this is going to be, let's see what happens. Right. right. Roll and the did dice. you have any communication nope, no. with him about the package i or said anything, nothing or? i said i won the i won the match <laughs> i paid immediately and i said nothing so i was like that's 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 that'll be exciting i can't wait to see what he's done because uh i um saw a i got a, a tweet from mike simone and he got the bvm that bob sent him and it came, and he didn't get back to me whether it passed customs or not. No, he hasn't got back to me yet. So I wanted to ask him uh, because Mike is in Canada whether there was some customs charge or some or some import fee or something like that. But uh, Bob's method of the wrapping up the small one worked pretty well. So I guess the small ones, okay, it makes sense. A little bit easier to, yeah, to ship. The small ones are easy to ship. But then I had here's another one i had someone ship so but no that's really cool the mic i hope he got it and i yeah it's, it's going to be really interesting to hear everything mm. and it's very cool of bob to find him that and send him that because i still have very nice one and let's let's so let's actually just for a moment shout out to bob so bob yeah uh, you know he is, is a classic example of what bob does in the community mike simone making those tremendous s video calls for mr doing a shit ton of work that a lot of people are appreciating but only has a, a composite and S-video monitors, doesn't have a PVM, doesn't have BVM. And Bob took a PVM from his collection. Uh, he had an extra one, packed it up, shipped it to Mike, sent it to him so he can continue working with that. And I dare say, look, if Mike and us and uh, you and I hadn't talked about this, Bob doesn't talk about this. This is the a lot of the hidden things that he does behind the scenes. So I, I want to call Bob out on this one that yeah, he's done yeah. a tremendous thing. It's one of these... One of the ways that Bob really helps the scene uh, behind the scene. So good on you, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Completely under underappreciated how much he helps out with things that people don't know and uh, don't pu don't get publicized. There's many times where mm. some things um, Bob will just you know if you need a piece of equipment for something mm. and you're in our situation. There's been many times where it's like, hey, can you please, is there any way? And I, I you know, I'll even offer to pay shipping or something. He's like, no, just send it. He'll ship it to me really quickly. I'll just turn around and pay the shipping to send it back. But he doesn't, you know, it's so, hmm. it's it's like unreal the amount of, um, I was, you know, I was really happy to see that he was helping Mike out and, and made that post about it. Good for you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Bob. I wish I wish I could send PVMs. I can't send them. It's too far. Yeah, to send well, from even Europe. me. Yeah, that's like it was. It's it's. Uh, I complain about having no time, but I know Bob's like the only other guy too that you know is do or not the only guy, but I don't. There's there's a lot of people like juggling other jobs with this. There's not a lot of people that are just doing this one thing. I think full time, and Bob's one of them. And for him, you know he's got he's got so much always on his plate for him to mm. be able to just drop things and do things that no one and ever talks doesn't. about and then does i'd love quickly. to um i'd love to hear more it's one thing i'd like to hear more from other retro creators like how do you how do they balance uh regular life and retro life and building and i know from my work in comedy and working with artists that the the number one thing that I can do to develop a young comedian as they're they're going is to give them just enough income that they can live from it. And you know, you're if you're a young person, you don't give a shit. You sleep on the floor, you eat a sandwich. You know, if that's your dream of doing something, dream of being a comedian, then you can get by on very little money. And we know really clearly that if we could just get them to that level. Uh, that they don't have to worry too much about a job or if it is a job like it's you know a real simple one or something like that 
That's like the number one thing to focus on your art, to focus on your creation. But that's, you know, as soon as you get beyond 25, that's hard to do sometimes with the different commitments that come along in life. Um, so yeah, even that, and even for you, like, you know, you've got to balance making the stuff as well as fixing a monitor. You got to fix a bunch of monitors to support yourself, support your family. Yeah. Well, the crazy thing right now is just the unfathomable rate of like increase of costs of normal things in our lives. Right. I mean, it's no lie. I'm sure that's, there's the same thing going on where you're living, where the prices of stuff over the last year is just Mm -hmm. gone, goes up every time. It seems like you go to the store. So, um, yeah, that becomes a new challenge of, uh, figuring out, you know, what, we're always talking about pricing and things, but when, when, yeah, when costs immediately go up, it's like, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's another challenge on top of everything. Everybody else is dealing with it. Um, Mm. it makes me wonder where things are going in the next couple of months, especially here in the United States, because, uh, there's really a lot of like hot talk right now about, you know, economic recessions, um, on the Mm. table for us in the United States so that all that stuff is going to impact it. And, um, so it that will flows be interesting. down to creators. Yeah. Well, right. And that will be interesting. And we might want to just keep talking about this as this stuff happens real time over the next couple of years and just see all the fallout of it, but also kind of walk through how this is impacting things because over the next couple of months, I don't see how, if the, um, you know, statistically, just based on economic stuff, all that the United States has to do is go like negative for two straight quarters. And it's considered a, a like a termed it's considered a recession. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the, the second. Right. So the second quarter is coming up on the mm-hmm. 30th of this month. That's the reporting date for the second quarter of this year. Mm-hmm. So there's already talks that we already had a, a, a shrinking the first quarter. This is about to be, you know, there's already people getting popular, lots of click baity stuff saying it's coming, it's coming, but it might actually be coming, you know? Yeah. And then what does that mean for that? Exactly. That's going to make it more difficult for all of us Mm. because it's financial. It's it's financial hard trip that's going to happen to everybody. Oh, wait on the bloody neighbors just fired up the mower right at exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Can you hear that? Can you hear the mower? I could hear it. Like, I thought maybe like a, a little bit. Like a truck drove by. All right. We'll just we'll leave the window. <laughs> it's okay. Closed. No, it's nothing. I don't hear it's it. It's all right anymore. now. I'll put that. Um, definitely prices are going up in Estonia. And like they're going up in ways that, like, usually if something's like 10 cents, I don't know, 20 cents, 50 cents more when you go to the supermarket, you're like, ah, you don't notice it, right? It doesn't register on your radar. But I'm talking to so many of my friends and we're all like, yeah, that thing just went up like a euro. That thing just went up like 70% of the cost or something. And then you start realizing, oh, that like everything's gone up. Today, uh, fuel hit a new record here in Estonia. I think the even the diesel was above two euros. The, the unleaded is higher. So we're talking about like we because we're doing comedy shows all around the country. We're driving like many people are. So that's fuel. And, and then because it's something like the, the amount that we're legally allowed to compensate our employees for their travel doesn't like the government doesn't raise that amount, but fuel's rising. And we're like, we got to basically fudge the books to give them more money so that they can actually afford to, to get around. So um it's 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 difficult and 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 um yeah when does that flow into okay a creator's life is it okay everything is hard so you've got to work a little more and what about creators that sell things does that mean that there are knock on that now you're not only with the part shortage but just if you're factoring in your labor and your time anyone who's selling a a device a dongle a, a homemade product that's going to go up as well everything is it's Ooh. yeah, it's it's you know, it's a volatile time in all marketing and uh, all markets and all mm. you know geopolitical all over the world. Obviously, there's something crazy going on, and you know all you gotta do is pick up any newspaper in any country, and you'll find the craziest thing. So, right now, um, it is we're like we're you know it's we've already been feeling like some of this storm coming almost. I feel like though it's not like the storms mm. already hit us. That's the that's the worst part. I think. It's because everybody can go into, like you say, your local grocery store and look at items that have 
uh, gone up in price. And now the popular thing is to also shrink down the size portion of it. Yeah. So you're actually getting a little bit smaller of a portion than you thought mm -hmm. at, at a, either the same price or a higher price. And uh, I'll be honest with you, Lewis, like I'm, I haven't bought bacon. <laughs> I haven't bought bacon in probably like a year and a half, except for like out at a restaurant. Uh, or, or something and my or if I go home and my family members have it like if I'm visiting mm -hmm. because like the bacon itself man it got to the point where it's so expensive uh it's just something that I'm like well that's just a luxury item at that at this point which is crazy but yeah bacon it's like yeah that's where we're all coming onto these realizations that there are things in our lives that we're gonna uh, it's gonna be different for each individual but there's something mm -hmm. that's probably gonna get cut out what is that or what what happens and it's so it's a scary thought that's a good point for whoever like whatever level you're at no matter what socioeconomic class you're in there's something you've cut out i bet it i bet for everyone reason okay unless you're really rich right but like everyone's cut out something at some level recently to to help get by to to help it yeah for me look it's a lot easier these days when i'm not really smoking much weed <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh that'll save you some money but see there again it's a different change so uh yeah i think anything well for me too like it's like i go out i used to remember taking my wife out and going to like lunch and i used to go and you could have a good lunch somewhere that was nice and it would be 30 dollars. well now it's 50 dollars. it's 50 dollars to go have just a lunch between the two of us if I take out my kids to a dinner, it's at least like a hundred every time. And sure. so that at that point you got to like, and you have young kids. So half the time you're like, I'm pissed. I'm paying a hundred bucks to take you rats out in public and you're acting awful. And it's like, why, why did I waste my money <laughs> and my efforts here? Should have just stayed at home, but kept this, you know, so it's really, uh, it, it, I noticed that like I go out in my town and I don't see a lot of other people bringing their kids out to these places. Like, I'm like, Andrew, I'm like, you guys need to wake up and look around. You're like the only kids out in town in like the cool restaurant mm. that there's like nobody here. So it's uh, it's weird. It's yeah, it's I think that the food, cr food crisis, food prices is going to be the obvious thing. And obviously fuel, too. Like you say, there's, there's a slow reaction to this stuff. The fuel price is going up so quickly. I had talked to people today about wondering if I could come like drive somewhere to meet them. And I'm like, the fuel costs are so high right now. It's going to cost you just as much to have me go meet you halfway as it would to ship it with like you ship because mm. the fuel, I'm like, I can't just do it and not, you know, do just to do it. It's, it's like it burned my own fuel or something. So it's, it's definitely affecting things. Oh, here's an, the last thing I'll say about the fuel oh, stuff. Yeah. I actually had to put an order in for my boiler fuel, and oh, that's, that's right. straight diesel. Her. And it's got mm -hmm. it's down to like you know a lower than a quarter of a tank. And I'm like, so I'm talking to the guy. He's like, yeah, you want to fill it up? And I'm like, dude, fill it up, man. That's gonna be 200 gallons of diesel. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. Just give me 100 gallons. And he's like, okay. And then yesterday I'm sitting there and I'm like, they're coming next week. And I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, do I just go ahead and refill the whole damn thing? Because I know like six months from now, 100 gallons of diesel fuel is going to cost more than it is today. Right. Oh, I, mean, okay. I'm not, yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. to be a dumbass to see that. Do you yeah, do you sure. think that like uh, that's I not thought that about crazy. that way? That makes sense. Yeah. If you're so do I just go ahead and bite guy. the bullet and mm. buy, you know, pay a twelve hundred bucks for a load of fuel or. <laughs> Do I try to wait and think it's going to come down? But then it could cost me twelve hundred bucks for a hundred gallons six mm. months from now, because who knows? It's all this what kind of things. Do? We're all fucked, mate. That's, that's <laughs> everything. It's, it's all, all right. stuffed. Stuffed. Just, <laughs> you know, like you say, we're going to make changes. Like, Just got to get through. Anyway, yeah. I got some, uh, after, some we're good stuff. after we're done here. I'll tell you the good stuff. I get those. Uh, I found a, a cheap slow cooker. I got some ribs on tonight. Oh. They're, they're going to be timed <laughs> after we're done here. I got like a kilo and a half of ribs on. I put the barbecue sauce. I made all that <laughs> early today. Oh, oh there's still oh, the little pleasures. Mwah, mwah. So Woo. there's beef, beef or pork ribs? Uh, they are 
pork. Pork, because uh, in Estonia, pork is way more common. There is beef still, but pork's really... I don't know, it's always been an animal that they kind of had, I don't know, since back in the day here in Estonia, uh, on farms and stuff like that. So certainly, beef is, is everywhere. You can have whatever you want. But a um, lot of pork, a lot of pork. So I got some pork ribs on there Yeah, uh, from some local suppliers. That's Woo. that's something else I do is I use the pork a lot too because again it's usually cheaper than the beef and it's just as good. I like it. Get, get some pork on your fork. That's what we say in Australia. <laughs> pork on your fork, mate. We call it the other the other white meat here. Oh, the other white meat. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. So uh, this week I have um, I've been working uh, continually to work on my video about the lag controller lag tester device. So that's the one that has been put forward by Mr. Add-ons. And when he's got his big database of controller uh, lag times, um, that's it's this device. And it's built from an Arduino Pro Micro. Um, so they cost about, even they've gone up. They used to be five bucks and now they're 10 bucks. I was about to, I usually keep a bunch of them on hand just for projects. and You, like you have and, like a bunch of them around. That's smart. I should have just bought a bunch of them. But like you say, now they're so expensive. Now it's double. Well, here's the same thing with your diesel. Do I buy them now for yeah. maybe eight bucks or something, and then they're gonna they're just gonna go up more. So, uh, yeah, I was I was very happy that um, I built the. So I've sort of we were talking earlier that I'm starting to get my process down for how I make these sort of videos. And you you were very kind with your words that my my voice is starting to come through in these videos or a kind of a personal style, and along with that also goes the the process because. I think people don't often talk about when you start to create YouTube videos or you're making content in any sort of form, you develop into a routine, a process, you know, what's your formula for how you make them? It's not usually just turn on the camera and talk. There's usually something that goes on behind the scenes and I'm starting to get that process down for these videos. So it starts with, um, cause it's usually a project and I want to show what this project is. So I start by making it and then I make sure the camera is turned on almost <laughs> the whole time that I'm filming that part of it. And that's the first B roll. And so that is me building it, getting to know it, understand it. You know, it's the crazy part where everything's all off. Then I can write a script about it. And I try and I'm trying to very much like edit, edit, edit edit it down using all those skills from stand-up comedy because stand-up comedy is about editing down to the smallest amount possible. Um, Then I could film some A-roll and then when that's all done, then I go back and film another set of B-roll, which is all the bits that I missed uh, before that. So I have been, I've written the script. uh, I've got the shots laid out. I've got half the shots. Um, I've noticed that I need to try to get to the A roll, like the on camera stuff quicker because if I don't, it feels like, like that's when it feels like the video is real. When I actually sit down and I'm like, Hey, welcome to Zez Retro. Here's my thing. Da da da. When I actually do that, then I feel like it's there. Like something's really happened until then I can sometimes feel like, Oh, it's dragging on. I haven't done anything. It's all in my head. So I'm pretty much ready to film that tomorrow. Okay. And I was very happy that uh, I... Um, so with this project, we're testing the re- the lag results of controllers. Right, let's, let's and my results from this are- specific project. So you are... Let's let's go through your process for this one that you're working on right now. Okay, like, sure. Like, if you don't mind. So um, you mean the, 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 the video like, project? Yeah, the video, like, like, yeah, like how you're working through it right now. Like, sure. with just like an example form of what we were just talking about, how you are um, getting into a flow... Or it could be any really video if you want to talk about, it, but I think this is good. This is a good example of one, the one you're working on right now, kind of working through it. Because yeah, so I it's. Think I, I think that like yeah, it's like baking a cake or anything. People <laughs> want to know the recipe, right? If you're in this, okay. it's it's very interesting, and I love hearing different people's approaches to how you know you you make a project. So I've had this one floating around in my head for a long time like for ages right. uh i i saw whenever i saw this um mr lag test results from from pork chop express i was like how did he get them and then he's got some really short but quite informative notes in the back of that spreadsheet about how to do it and i read it and i was like oh yeah that all kind of makes sense sure it seems reasonable and i never so it floated around in my head for a real long time and i've noticed that Ideas need to float long enough. Like you've got to let them go there like long enough, but not too long, which I realize is a really wishy-washy way to do it. But 
I had to let that idea s- circle around in my brain. So I looked around. Next thing I'll probably do is, do I have all the parts? Do I have enough stuff? I, I, I'm the sort of person that I preemptively buy a lot of stuff. Uh, like little things, not big things. So like, for example, there was that PlayStation 1 memory card project that I, I, I wrote about about a week ago. And yes. the, the, the board that drives that is not an Arduino, but it's a Raspberry Pi Pico. And I went, oh, I don't have any of those. And I looked online and they're about six euros each or something, like six bucks or seven bucks each. So immediately ordered a couple of those and think, because my thinking is like, well, even if I don't make that one now, it sounds like a thing that's used a lot in projects. I should have for, for, for 15 bucks, I should have a couple of them. So I'll order the bits and pieces that I need. Um, and then I, I, I because at first you, you're building it for the first time. So you're just sitting down, hacking away, soldering. Um, and the big, the big lesson that I learned from the previous videos was film this part. Right. And, uh, I put the camera above, above me here, just doing a top-down shot. And I'll start and stop it a few times. Uh, so like if I'm like, okay, now I'm doing the controller button. So start and then do that bit and stop. So, so it's not all one big chunk of hours of film. The, the yeah, idea yeah, is yeah. then later I can go through the footage and go like, oh, that 15 minute clip. Sure, that was me working on the controller button. Okay. And um, because what I'll do later when I bring all the clips into uh, Final Cut Pro, I do go through and I write a description for each of them. So I... Okay. can refer that that is a bit boring to look at all your clips and go like no i was soldering that now also but it's, <laughs> it pays off later to or to like, be able watch to go it, like a, yeah watch it 15 minute shot you shot and you're like wow i just did that and i, I used it for like a 20 second segment <laughs> right it's like hilarious to think about but right no you have to label your footage some way yeah. Like I have a numbering system for each video where I just number it a certain way based on my a head I made up in, or a key I made up in my head. So yeah, I don't actually type the names, but that's a similar thing. You've got to do it, otherwise. Yeah, I mean it was slowing no, no, me down, having like to go back slower, through everything. Yeah. So, so you're yeah, making so, you're making the item, and you realize yeah. yes, and this is a very important thing. Yeah, if you want to do a project on it. Uh, you got to film it. You got to film some segments of you making it usually or looking at the boards or something mm-hmm. for the portion of making it. So that's where we're at. Yeah. So you right. film those sections. And I'm, and I'm thinking about as well, actually, Steve, because once I'm done describing my process, I'm, yeah. I'm already in my brain thinking about your videos <laughs> and how they're a bit different. And I have questions yeah. for you about your ones. So yeah, we'll get yeah. To, we will get to yeah. yours. Yeah, no, no, that's uh, perfect. I think we should go through this whole thing and yours and then we'll talk. We'll uh, go through your after one. That. Yeah, no, yeah we'll one. do it after. And I'll so I make it, something. so I've made it now and I, I think I've got it going. That's the general idea that I get it going well enough that I understand it. I can replicate it, that the device basically works. And with uh, this lag tester, it does seem to work. Like I, uh, I was getting consistent results that match up close enough to the, the the times that are listed in the official spreadsheet. So I have a Daemon Byte adapter, which are known for having very low response times, and I was getting less than a millisecond off that. Um, I also have the 8-bit Do arcade stick, which has three connection ways, Bluetooth. Uh, this is actually a very interesting finding that I had. It has Bluetooth, wired, and its own dongle, all three of them. A proprietary dongle? This or, one, yeah. Okay. So it does Bluetooth. Okay, pretty standard. Uh, in the back there, you can stick a USB-C cable okay. in there. But the other thing that it does is it's got, yeah, its own built-in oh, dongle. Oh, okay. okay. And it's paired, it works straight up. So this becomes a very interesting test case because you've got three different ways to, to test off the same stick. And what I found was that wired and the built-in dongle were very consistent with the official results. So this is good. Um, They're very consistent. That matches up. But my Bluetooth results were really off, like way too much, like double the amount. Instead, it should be seven. It was like 14 milliseconds, which is almost a good result to have, actually, because what that tells me is my Bluetooth sucks somehow, (laughs) either the adapter or my configuration or something like that that... So when I got, I know that my results are right, but Bluetooth is the problem. I'm using an a U Green AliExpress adapter, so maybe I thought that was a decent adapter. 
Apparently, maybe not. But nevertheless, it shows the results are consistent uh, through that. So I've been able to crunch the numbers, put that all together. Then um, I need to give it a little bit of time, at least an overnight, but probably some days. And then I have to write a script. And I like to write a script here because I'm trying to keep these videos short. My goal of these ones is to keep them... like I. I think this video should be 10 minutes, 12 minutes, something like that. I'm trying to not make them waffly. I'm trying to get to the point. That's just the style that I want for this video. Other videos will be blah, 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 forever. So I'm making a script and I'm thinking about what's the catch? What's the thing in this? What's the angle, I guess? And I struggled on this one because there's not really an angle. I don't have some almost like I want to say almost like clickbaity kind of like, what's my thing? It's the biggest, it's the craziest, it's the something. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. apparently if, if you have the biggest CRT, you get 110,000 views. That's what <laughs> yeah, I heard. I know, yeah. That's not, <laughs> that's not even the, I mean, it's, yeah, it's got to be over 40 inches or something because I've made plenty of videos about 36, 32, 30, and nothing, nothing close to that one. It's the four, fours busting into that four territory. But you say but yeah, the biggest, you, and then uh, the biggest. Yeah, no, that's yeah. a buddy of mine who's got a really high, and we could talk about this later on. But yeah, he told me. I asked him. Uh, he's got an anime channel. I asked, you know, okay. Shank gave me some input. Oh yeah. So it's kind of interesting. Um, but it was along the lines of YouTube loves the biggest, the wildest, the largest, the smallest, the worst, the last, <laughs> the whatever. So maybe it's just a combination of a few things it's something so i'm i'm thinking about what's the the angle what's the is there something unique or is there something stupid that i should do as a a funny kind of prank in there or something you know something <laughs> the uniquest to... the uniquest lag <laughs> test ever <laughs> right at the end of the day this is freaking lag testing how exciting <laughs> i've got a, a comma separated list of results that i'm putting into excel wow and I know. That, how do you how do you like relate it back? Yeah. What's that moment? That's what you're So I, to I eventually at. settled on just do it. Like that this won't be this some crazy kind of thing. This won't be this in the end, this probably won't be, at least in my mind. The concept isn't like so clickbaity that it's gonna get thousands of views or something. But this is something I want to make a video about. I've done the project. I think it's interesting. How about I just do a nice to concise video? It's straight up and down. And you can learn about this thing. And I try to like, there's not so many jokes in this video. And I kind yeah. of think it's um, okay. What I did notice about this video is it's the most technical that I've done so far in that the project has the most number of steps. Like some things are very easy to explain. Here's a monitor. Look at it. I, I don't know. Or here's just something. Isn't that interesting? I'll talk about it. Yeah. Where this is a very much a homebrew project uh, started by Mr. Radons. It's really bare bones. Um, it works yeah. though. Everything works. Right. If you follow the steps, it works, but it's, there's no graphical interfaces to help you. So I have to explain a lot of bits along the way. And I found that was kind of bogging me down in the middle of it, how to keep that interesting, how to keep that fun. And, um, and you're, and you're I, trying to write this whole script for this, right? I'm trying to write a script about it. And, and I've found a, a little relationship. bit of different approach because it's a whole technical, mostly technical details here. And I think I needed the script when it's technical because there's so, there's like so many bits to lay out of this project that I right. need to... Right, and you to, don't want to forget something just trying to go from your head kind of deal. Right, right. and I don't, and I want to make sure that I'm, I'm hitting each point, but not too much and, and, and just exactly. enough and, and everything. And I've noticed a, a, a relationship between the more technical it is, probably the less jokes that I'm putting into that particular script because now I'm just trying to get through the thing. If on the, op the other side of that is if I've got something really lightweight and I'm trying to think, like may maybe even a good example is the, the 20 inch screen, that one that I've been crapping on about on YouTube, uh, been crapping on about. Uh, we can see a little bit, it's just sitting there. What, on Twitter? On Twitter, that one yeah. that I bought. <laughs> so there's an example. I will make a video about that, but it's just a 20 inch LCD. For the most part, who cares, right? There'll be a few right. things I can test. Here's the response time. Da, 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 da. Well, but that will mostly be a more entertaining video. The less technical the topic is, the more entertaining and silly and fun I can make it. But the more technical it is, like 
the lag tester, I kind of <laughs> got to just, you know... Stick to it. At least with my level of development right now. Now, maybe I'll evolve and get better and uh, I will feel more comfortable to, to be goofy in a technical video. <laughs> so well, I had you're to doing, You're discover. doing good, yeah. And it's good to try um, different approaches. I commend you for that because sometimes... If you, I mean, if you're making a video that's meant to be technical, it and and again, you're already trying to streamline this video, and even with streamlining it, just the technical power punch important stuff is still it's very difficult sometimes to properly. We were talking about this this week. It's very difficult to still properly um, describe everything in a certain time limit sometimes mm. and you still you know you're always thinking like you say how to condense so you don't have probably the room for um as much jokes in between a very technical video and especially something where you where you're trying to highlight the details of the technical points sure that that's what you're trying to hit so maybe later on uh i'm trying to think like um like maybe I could find something really wacky to lag test or something like that, or something really crazy. Maybe that could be an extra video. I put this first one out, get the thing, get the stats, get the people informed because this is something that not this little project is kind of hidden away and not a lot of people know about it. Get that one done, and then maybe I can do some wackiness later. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, I've I got the script down. I decided to just make it more straight up and down. Um, I'm ready now to film. Oh, I had to talk to Porkchop Express to ask him a few questions about it. So that's nice that creators are available and he's he's politely Absolutely, answering right. my questions, which is really cool. And yeah, then I've got to film the A-roll. Uh, then try to piece what I have. So I've got the A-roll on camera stuff. Then I use whatever footage I've already got and put that in to the, to the, the project. And I'm going to have gaps. I already know the gaps in my footage. So I'm going to put that into the project because, and then later on, almost as the, the last step along the line is do a second round of B-roll of, I need a shot of this. I need a close up of the Arduino. I need a, a better shot of me soldering. I need something else and then film those last bits. And I'm like I was saying before, I think it's important for me to start to film the on-camera stuff. That's when it's real then it feels like I've really made something. Until then, it's just sort of floating around in my head. It's an idea. Have I, oh, I've written a script, but have I really done something? Have I really made something? So I'm looking forward to filming that on-camera stuff, putting it into Final Cut, looking at my fat head and going, yeah, now <laughs> the video is coming along somewhere. And I reckon I, then it shouldn't be too long. Then it should be a few more days to stick it all together, edit and and so forth and... So that's evolving is that process of how to make the uh, those kind of review videos or showing about a particular project. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's cool. And thank you yeah, for sharing that. That's awesome. I think everybody that's listening uh, should really you know, be thankful that somebody would come out and even talk about how they're you know, working in this thing because there's no exact right answer. And there's things that, um, like you say, being able to evolve is important. Uh, we have, we have been doing things this year, you know, this show might seem like one thing, but it's like, we've been doing a lot of things, trying things, things have been going really good, things that are just mm -hmm. like going, but we, I think we both realize the importance of being able to, uh, almost have help, helpful people on each side to talk you through kind of some of these ideas. Uh, one of the things that we just br briefly brushed over here kind of towards the end that is awesome that we need to probably say some more about was when you reached out to Pork Shop to talk to him about this. And I think that that's something that um, is in increasingly like an important step. Let's not stop right there because I think that if you're going to do an entire project on something somebody does mm – -hmm. um, it's courteous and it's going to make things better if you reach out to that person in some way, if there's something that you need from them. Now, I understand there's going to be some things where all the data is out there and you don't need to reach out to them unless you have a weird specific question, right? Like, mm. you know, 
Uh, but this is a different project where it's kind of a homebrew thing that people don't know about. So it's very much an, an, a great idea of reaching out to him and anybody. If you're like, that's a great example of something. If you're doing a special on something that someone's done, why not reach out to him? It's so easy now uh, if they're around. So it, as I always get a little bit nervous, I mean, I know pork chops, I've, I mean, I've talked to him for a couple of hours podcast, yeah. right? And uh, he's a, he's, he's a, a really nice guy, but I, I have a thing, even in, in the real world, in comedy, uh, when I meet even comedians that I like, and not even American comedians, like just even famous comedians from other countries in Europe, like I get a little nervous whenever I'm talking to someone, I guess when I'm, whenever I'm talking to someone that I admire, let's put it that way. Sure, uh, that's They normal. don't have to be famous. Yeah, like I don't want to waste <laughs> their time. Right. I want to, you know, hassle them about something like that. And uh, yeah, sometimes I can see, sometimes I do this and it's, I don't know what the good, if it's good, but when I get a reply from someone that I admire, I almost can't check it straight away. I will almost have to wait like eight <laughs> hours or something just to be like, like I don't know why, what what that is. Like I just <laughs> I can't. Like Pork Chop wrote to me, and it took me like fucking a day to get back to him. <laughs> uh, you I don't know what that you're is. Busy, like it's uh, like it's that old thing. Don't call the girl too soon. Don't <laughs> yeah. don't. Don't she gave you her number back in the day before you had yeah, cell yeah. phones. You're like, don't call too soon. You might get the answer machine. And then what do you do? And it's like, there's whole s s comedy bits about that used to be. Now nobody yeah. experiences that. Maybe it's how quick to message now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, how quick, exactly. That's what we're talking how about. Now it's reply, how quick yeah. do you reply? So that's funny. But, um, so yeah, that's, um, my side but what about yeah. now do you want to tell us yeah, about the, sure. the work that you did with uh epos with the professor yeah so uh i got reached out to so here's the thing a, a lot of my videos like when lewis was telling you about how they're technical mine tend to be a lot of technical details and and um i unfortunately don't really have the time to always you know i mean i'll be honest with you, there's probably three videos i've done out of 360 that have a full script for them okay. um everything is like everything on mine is more of like a brainstorm outline of where i need this video to go and i've got to concentrate on what i'm saying and my enunciations and there are times where i say something and then i stop and then i re-say it because my tongue gets twisted or something <laughs> so that's very normal and those are edited out and there's also long chunks of like you said a minute of me like sitting there talking about the same stupid thing over and over and over again. I'm like, why did I sit? So, but then that's, so since I'm not writing it, I'm stuck with the position of always rewatching and cutting out large chunks of repetitive things that I don't need. And that's, you know, all this is good practice. I think mm. whatever you're doing, as long as you're creating good stuff, it doesn't really matter um, how you get there. Cause there's not one perfect answer, but, there are other instances like this last project I actually did have to write a script because it was something I was very trying to get down a concise uh, under I wanted it to be two and a half minutes and that's what exactly it turned out to be uh, but it was I was invited by Epus Vox which some of you probably have heard of him he's got about 300,000 subscribers hmm. um, big time into CRTs and um, I've talked to him a few times I've, I've met him in person and so he's a great guy. And um, he reached out to me uh, on on a DM and just said, hey, would you mind shooting a little segment on something uh, like technical and then just uh, like plugging your channel and your work uh, specifically on CRTs? And then he said, uh, here's a couple topics. And the first one was magnetism and degaussing, which is which is another reason, Lewis, that other video blew up is because of the, I'm sure it had to do with the visualization on that thumbnail mm. where it was just whacked out colors and people were like, what the heck is that? Because degaussing and magnetism. So I was, I was showing you, I was like, all right, I'm doing this. I'm going to, it's like three day deadline. So I wrote this script and it's like three pages. And then I'm just like, all right. So like I give it to you, we start chopping this script down. And that's like the first time I'd written a script in a while. But <laughs> it, you're like, this script will be three minutes. And I'm like, bullshit, man. This script would be like, I start looking at it. And I'm like, this script is like seven minutes. I was like, I cannot send him <laughs> a seven-minute clip of me 
you know, rambling on, even with a scripted good video. I was like, I don't want it. So mm. I had a three original tips. Um, one of them we were talking about could be kind of dicey for safety and uh, misinterpretation again in a what, one minute segment. <laughs> so we're like immediately chopped mm. that one. Uh, then I got done and I was like, wait a second. The whole thing on magnetism itself has like three tips in it. So it's basically the whole thing. I, I don't have time. I, don't, I just need to get it really good and do it. It, it, ma it made it with the intro and closing to 2.5 minutes or uh, two point, you know, two thirty exactly. Right. Cool. Uh, but I went through a little bit of a different approach cause I'm terrible at reading my script. Like, I don't know. Are you, do you have, you have practiced, but you have, um, a lot of experience with re remembering yeah. your lines. I guess you might say I, I, I struggle if I'm acting, like acting, acting in something. I do struggle to remember the lines, but I had definitely have improved over the years. Usually it's something where I'm like filming a, like some, not like, it's usually not TV ad anymore. It's like YouTube ad, you might say for a minute, a minute and a half or something. And I've got some lines. Um, yeah, I um, I can usually remember like a paragraph at a go sometimes, but I, sometimes I'll be like, guys, we need to take five. I've got to go re try and pump these lines through my head. <laughs> and I can feel a difference in my acting when I don't remember the lines because I know I'm trying to think of my lines. I'm not trying to think about how to be a better actor or how to in the moment. So it's I still find that scary, uh, but I think it's it's definitely something you can learn over time. Yeah, and that's what was obvious to me. I'm like, I just don't ever do this very much. So, um, you know, my original, my original plan was I had taken my script right, and I looked through that magnetism, and I was like, "Ooh, this is the B shots I want for each one of these." So mm -hmm. I took a separate piece of paper, and as I went down that script, I wrote out what each B shot I wanted. Right? Good. Mm -hmm. And like you say, and then I was like, okay, I want each one of these B shots. And I went and I either took the fresh B shot in one day or I, um, I pulled it from archive footage, right, that I have that I shot before that are the same exact things that I want to show. Mm -hmm. So I pulled all that together and filed it. And I actually made a video of just me chopping the bits I wanted to for the B. So it would be like just this B footage for the first segment and then a blank out for five seconds and then the next segment of B footage and body yada, 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 all the way down through the whole segment on magnetism. And that way I had that whole pace and I could tell, I was like, holy crap, I've got two minutes already of B footage. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at my script and I said, I can't sit here and like pump these lines out, all of it and just memorize it and pump it out. Good. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. I, I can do a sentence really good and then stop. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just shoot. I'm going to pick some highlighted se sentences in this sketch. And it was like the intro and then like two sentences about magnetism that I just filmed myself saying a couple of times, a couple of different ways. And then the rest of it, I just set up and, you know, did let the B-roll fold. And I just read the rest of the script from a screen and you could do that much easier and pace it, you know, just reading it and do so many more options. So that was like, to me, I don't know why I, I was like, I don't know why that's such like a, a moment of like a, a light bulb going off rather than wasting the whole time trying to remember the lines and do the whole segment mm -hmm. and then later throw it in premiere and just cut out and then like overthrow, you know, and have more sections of me in it than I really want. And so I was like, wow, that's actually probably something a lot of people do normally. And I was like, I finally just stopped. I was like, I'm just going to do these certain lines and pick them. So this is like one of the more structured videos I've ever done. Um, mm -hmm. It's helpful because I feel like it can help me go forward and make this kind of a video. Uh, mm -hmm. But I will still always, too, make the videos that are very technical of me talking and, again, me editing out too much redundancy. But there's... I want to go back to what you were talking about, the the, the, the balance of filming B-roll and remembering the lines, right? So right. when the first time I think I ever, the first video I ever made, I think on that D-sub connector from Japan, I think I actually used a teleprompter for that. I used a different camera really? that I could hook a teleprompter up to. But your point is very valid that the more B-roll, the more extra shots you have, well, the less you need to look into the camera and the more it's just a voiceover, right? So the more, and I think as I'm 
making more videos, I'm putting more B-roll in them. Well, in this one I am. Then again, in the Telemi's Dreaming video, I didn't do that. But then I wasn't scripted though. So that's okay. That doesn't count. Um, okay, but the the one that I did before, I think it was the previous S video one. I recorded most of that just looking like like reading, you know what I mean, like reading my bit of paper and not looking properly and remembering it. And I remember that when I was editing it, I thought like, oh, I really wish that bit. I'd looked into the camera for that bit. Now I've got to cover it with with B roll because I was right. looking away and just reading from that. So even that experience has made me think about having a balance that, yeah, it's tough. You've got this whole thing. You've got to remember it. Like how many lines can I remember in a go? Um, or there's a bit where you just like, look, I definitely know this is going to be B-roll. No problems. I'll just, I'm not even going to think about it this bit, but I'm starting to, I guess that's the point. I'm starting to be able to identify, maybe I do want to do this bit on camera and maybe it's not so bad if I do, I do a jump cut one sentence, two sentences in a go. Like, can I at least get it that I've got two sentences in a go? And then I've got enough room to to f- mix it around like that. Yeah. Um, because also, even if you're doing one sentence in a row, you can do that clever little editing where you kind of jump between shot and shot and no one realizes that actually you just said one sentence and then you moved on to another shot. Like if you kind of cover the... If you cover the jump cuts with a little bit of b-roll no one realizes that you put a jump cut there it sounds like you just spoke the two sentences together and and pay pacing is key to what you're talking about and that Mm. kind of a method i realized that too that when i had for example the ability to just pick a certain number of lines and i was like that's only going to be 20 seconds at most of me I will pace this out. I could do that 20 seconds of lines. And then, like you said, you pace it in the way where you stop at your sentence, and then you continue that pacing style when you're not recording yourself, but you're just recording the audio. Mm. And like you say, it doesn't feel like you're getting different cuts of a video. It feels like it's one solid flow. It feels natural and not an awkward moment. Where you're like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. Where, um, And that's, that's again, like a deep benefit of scripting things. And I wish I still had my script in front of me. Maybe I can go grab it here for a second if you want me to. Yeah, go ahead. I, go. I wrote a bunch of stuff on it. Let's sure, see. go ahead. Steve's going off to, to get his script. It was fun. Uh, Steve came to me and said, hey, can I help with the editing? I was, uh, it was nice that he, 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 he asked for a bit of help there. So yeah, we, we went back and forth a few times and kind of pruned the script down a little bit. I did a couple of reads of it myself to sort of get the pacing down and... Um, All right. Here we go. He's got the actual script. Oh, you printed it out even. Look at you. So good news. I was able to find it pretty easily here. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I mean, I, it's just a typed out script. That you and I, you and I had, uh, you'd help me look over very carefully, and it was good. I still even made more changes where I crossed out things to shorten it even more. But good, um, yeah. After I started looking at it, I was like, I do not like. I don't want to remember this yeah, and try can't. to like quickly film this for a segment. Mm. So I finally read it, and there's like three sentences that I underlined, <laughs> and so that's where I like put a camera, and I was like, that'll be the one on camera. And same thing, I just put the intro will be on camera because that's easy. Mm. And then uh, and literally just read the rest of them um, on there. But, you know, I it was I think that that's that's the extreme benefit to script writing as opposed to um, freelance free thinking, free free throwing videos they are going to get. you, you get the opportunity to do more judging, editing, uh, proofing, uh, whereas the other videos, you're kind of just stuck with whatever you filmed. You know, you're like, well, I just did the project and I filmed whatever I was saying at that time. Mm. And so I'm just stuck with using that footage. I can't say, for instance, do a little bit different with it or change something about it as easily because I'm not prepared 
Mm. You know, I do want to ask you about your videos, that one, but one extra sort of final point on this scripting thing, in case some people, sometimes people can be worried when they're writing a script because the, the process of writing can be different to the process of talking. The way you write can be different to the way you talk. And sometimes in like in some walks of life or whatever, it can be really obvious, like especially like a politician. That's a written speech. That's not how someone talks in that tone or that pace or, or something like that or that sentence construction even. And I think there's a, a really key point on the end that let's say you, you do have your script. Like the script is there because... Mm, because you need to do it to get your ideas in order. You need to do it to uh, get it as tight as possible so you're not waffly. You need to do it so it's there. You need a script. You need a plan. But once that's done, then I think there's value in just backing off from that just a little bit. And it's like, cool, cool. Now I've, I've got it nice and tight in my head. And when you say that script, if you don't get the sentence exactly right, doesn't matter. If you don't get, if you add a few extra words here and there, doesn't matter. In fact, that might even be better because it. You, when you speak, you naturally speak it in a natural sounding talking way, not a written speechy way. So the script right. was there to get you tight, to get you get the ideas focused. And as long as you're still keeping that, as long as you're not waffling on for extra sentences and paragraphs and, and all this sort of stuff, you know, you add words, you switch the sentence around, um, that's, I think, good. You don't th I don't think what you want to do is get several paragraphs of text, remember it word for word, and then say that word for word. I think that will sound a little bit too artificial. Yeah, because like you say, you're not, I'm not a natural actor, so you're going to sit there and just see me trying to remember lines in my head <laughs> and struggle my way through it, and it'll just look like it's supposed to be some kind of goofy... Mm -hmm. Andy Kaufman skit, you know, <laughs> it's like, this is for real. So you're better off to say it naturally, and I see that. I I come across this circumstance a lot. Actually, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. I've got a voiceover recording to do. Uh, it's some there's um, it's uh, what is it for? It's for the tourist board of Estonia, and they got a whole bunch of short videos. I think Insta videos or maybe some YouTube ones. Uh, are talking about some of the heritage sites that are in Estonia and advertising those uh, the great heritage of Estonia and advertising that to tourists. And all up, that's about 30 minutes of uh, voiceovers. So it doesn't take 30 minutes. It's going to take several hours to read or once you, you do it and get the pace. Now, I read, I read those scripts uh, to familiarize myself and they're fine because that's the, the government agency. So they've got... Uh, no doubt very, very smart people already, but they've got editors and they've paid a proper translator. So it's all like proper English, right? <laughs> but what I get often is a company calls me, hey, Lewis, we want the native speaker to, to come and read it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And they've written a script that is like almost perfect English, but not quite. Or I can hear that it's like Estonian construction in English. And mostly... I can edit it there on the spot. And what I've noticed is, I mean, if the script is really bad, then I'm like, guys, we're going to have to take some time to edit this. And they can usually see that. And I'm like, it'll cost you a little extra because we're going to sit here and edit this. Let's let's do it. But if it's just like, how to say, not big grammar mistakes, more just like non, like the way a non-native speaker might write something. It's not technically wrong. It just doesn't sound native. What I have noticed is when I'm reading that, I often edit it in my head as I go. Like I read the line and it comes back out in native English. Incorrect. And like Incorrect. Correct, like you're, if we're just you're switching dropping, words around or yeah, you're switching dropping little bits. some words that there's like adding an extra. The or a yeah. or uh, stuff like that, right? Those yes. sort of things. Uh, and the, not like big right. edits. I've just noticed that it will often just plop out of my mouth <laughs> in the, the correct way without needing a formal editing process and I think that's the example of reading something and then saying it back in your own words sort of an, another angle yes. on that yes it is yeah that's that's interesting yeah definitely tell that a lot when you get translated to English um, text because English mm. is such a, a weird language I think compared to every other language from so from what I hear uh, <laughs> so yeah that's 
So if you're going, um, you know, there's obviously no, like we just keep saying it's, it's, I think it's been a, incredibly fun to, um, work on these kind of things mm-hmm. and have, uh, like you and I, I have loved that we've been able to throw things off each other's, mm-hmm. you know, at each other on ideas and it's only helped refine this stuff. Like I, this project, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, I was still like, golly, what if he just thinks this is terrible? He's just being nice. And it like <laughs> ends up cut. So I'm like, I'm not going to be like happy and like, whoa, yeah, yeah. You know, like get all this. But I was like, it's still um, a little bit at the end of the day. I'm like, well, it's a lot better than what I would have put together on my own. Because, again, mm-hmm. I had somebody to help me look at it who's qualified and knows, you know, in your situation knows about um, your side of things. And again, script writing and stuff where I just haven't done it as much. And a lot of my stuff has always been off the cuff, which has kind of worked for me for some. It's and I think it is. You, man. And that's right. And there's and it works for this type of mm. genre that we're working in, hmm. uh, especially where you're working on things and unexpected stuff shows up so it's not like again you know if you're just running into a monitor and you're like well i'm going to film this whole process rather than worrying about a script you're like the it's an improv of this monitor what's going to happen when i open it is it just going to be me talking about each part in here and kind of describing that or am i going to open it and there's going to be a big globby mess where some parts have exploded and that becomes the story um, I think there was a, a nice moment when we were editing your script for the for Epos Vox as well that we went back and forth and we said, oh, should that point and this point and we were moving sentences around and, and saying like, well, what's the point here and, and, and all sorts of stuff. And there was some point where, I mean, you could keep editing it to the to the cows come home, you know, right. to the final days, right? You could edit it forever. And at some point it was like, well, seems reasonable enough. And then we kind of had this idea that like from here now is the time when we can give it to epos and say hey mate uh because that now the thing comes that it kind of didn't it it, lo- it it escaped my mind actually for quite a little bit was that this wasn't just a summary that steve was making this was a summary of of some crt magnetism that steve was making for epos vox's audience and yeah. what we don't know very well, or at least I don't know very well, is who the hell is Epox Vox's audience at you know high level, low level, technical, not young, old, all kinds of things. And there was a certain point where it's like, okay, this script is okay. Now I think the professor needs to see it, and he like does this. We need to understand does this match to your audience or not? And then yeah. um, thankfully he said it did, but. You know, that's where I was kind of wondering. We don't want to keep editing it, going down the wrong path too far. I think, thankfully, yeah. It was all right. So this is the good thing. You get like, so he said, "Here's what I, here's what I need. Can you get it done by Wednesday?" Which is would have been today, uh, according to the calendar, Thursday. So hmm. this would have been yesterday. But I was like, "No, I'm going to get this done at least one day early." Or like my submittal, I want it to be done and refined one or mostly done one day early that way i can submit it to him and if it's like please there's still time here if there's something you don't like i can go change it easily right now Mm. and and redo that and uh so uh that's another thing you leave that an option as opposed to if you just edit edit, edit up to the last minute and send in a final copy uh like you said we could have sat there and spent so much more time and then i don't know how much better would it have ended up uh, are we getting to the point where, like you say, are we just putting too much time? It's just like, at the end of the day, it's still just a, a segment for a specific purpose. Uh, like you say, I gave him the script. He loved the script. And then, you know, give him, like, I'm just going to send him the clip. And so I sent him the clip. Um, do you want, <laughs> have a, I don't know, do you want to finish? We could finish. I feel like this is silly. Why don't we just finish this? We'll pull the uh, screen share will that will that audio show up on the clip if i oh right it? uh how to do that i guess the uh, look i'll tell you um i have one more question about your process well uh, let's before... just save this because hopefully it'll come out and then i'll we'll just talk about it and i'll plug the let's clip do that later. i'll tell you what yeah because yeah, we don't want to trump uh yeah E-Boss, i don't you know, want maybe he's it, put so... it out in this thing because i was going to say otherwise we could just you can send me the clip and i can just edit it in yeah what i we'll wanted to wait. know about your process steve is right you said that you 
you, you tend to sort of talk through and you're using your personality and you know, it's very you have a very interesting way of explaining these things and CRTs are very technical and you know a lot about it and you, you it's it's interesting and enjoyable to listen to you ex- explain how CRTs work but I'm, I'm a lot of your videos I've noticed yeah you um you know you're opening up and you're talking through it at the t- it seems like it's not a voiceover that's coming later it seems no. like you're doing something and you're talking about it at the time um like let's say okay you got a monitor in right now and you're like this is going to be a video i can already think about something about what this might is like are you doing the filming and that voiceover work kind of in the middle of you working on it so yeah yeah that's yeah. all one solid thing so what huh. like i have a lapel microphone and that's what I do. I, I record everything in segments with my camera, and then I use the lapel microphone so my audio quality is good. And uh, I just film it, and as I'm going, I'm talking through it. Yeah, okay. that's every one of those videos. I don't do a scripted back thing. Because, again, if I can do it that way, it it also cuts a big process out of not mm. having to do that. And I can get, for the time when I was growing through this, my idea was like, look, I don't really care. I just need to get content out there. I just need to get more content out there, more stuff covered. And so it was always, I don't have the time to script write everything uh, early on because I would put out sometimes 15 videos in a month when I started. And now mm-hmm. it's like the last month I got more views than ever. And I put out two views, two videos in a month. So it's like, <laughs> it's like the opposite world once you get, uh, into doing it a little bit more because you do have to put more time into it. So that's where I'm having the, um, you know, retrain myself into, into doing some things like that. But the other way is, yes, I go through, and that's why it seems like, because I am, um, I am literally going through it. Is it a little bit off-putting? Like, I I struggle with that, that way. Because let, let's say the, the lag test, the thing. Like, I don't even know, I've never built this thing before. I don't know what it is. I'm discovering it. Where is it more though? Like if you're getting a monitor, you know what's going to be inside. You sort of yeah. know a little bit more. Or do you, but okay, then the opposite is, do you get, une- what happens when something unexpected happens when the monitor is just dead, dead, dead? Or I think something? that, you know, it, it, it's a lot of stuff ends up on the editing floor. There's episodes I've filmed mm-hmm. that I've never gone anywhere with because I just don't have time or I just doesn't feel mm-hmm. right or it didn't go get the way I'd hoped. But mm-hmm. um, it's it's kind of this is all built back to where, you know, when you're talking about, for example, your specialty outside of behind the camera being um, on the stage for a comedy show and well when it comes to like my show my show Mm. is my ability to get in there and basically improv with a crt (laughs) so i know Mm. that it was like when i went to the whole thing in houston i got i got to do exactly what you said i spent Mm. three hours given an in-depth presentation on one of the crts that i know the absolute most about and am the most familiar with the 2030 i that's the one i've worked on the most ever out of any single model so i got to give a huge depth and then right after that i got to give a presentation to the same people on one i'd never seen before never used and so that's what i had to tell them i was like look i've had a whole big plan for this one this one's kind of just was gonna whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen Mm -hmm. i was like i've got all these tools here Mm -hmm. we'll see how this goes and it was, it was completely different. I thought I was going to have an opportunity to get into the second one and do a lot of geometry manipulation through a service menu. But I couldn't even get that unlocked in this. So and I was like, well, what are we going to do? So I said, well, let's discharge it. Let's check out the cap. Let's look at the anode. Let's put some dielectric grease on there. Let's talk about how you can get shocked in this area. So there was like another 20 minute segment, you know, and you get to show them how to discharge, how to put it all back together. Um, you get to pull the board out, look at it, say, look how much less components there are compared to the prior. And at the same time, it's like, this is honest. This is something I've not seen before. Um, I can tell you that from my experience, this is a consumer set inside of a metal shell. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's just the kind of... Just, but to your point, that is all those years of making videos like that, 
makes it to where I knew I wasn't going to mm-hmm. struggle in those presentations for the museum because yeah. it's weird. That's like the that's like the one audience where you get to do that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it makes uh, sense. You've been doing that. That's your style. You've been doing it for so long, and your um, how to say your channel, your whole thing, the whole retro tech thing is extremely focused. And you kind of have, have built up your thing of saying, hey, hey, I know, well, I'll, I'll say it, I don't know if you want to say, it. you're an expert on these things. Like you have deep domain knowledge about these devices. And when you have that deep knowledge on a certain topic, then you are able to just talk and show your experience and, hey, I've seen something like that over here. And I, I like channels like yours where I see someone who clearly knows like a shit ton about <laughs> this stuff. And that's different to my channel. I'm not present necessarily, uh, you know, focusing on one thing. I'm a little bit broader. Um, you know, I, I don't quite have my my one thing that I'm doing. And my my other podcast that I used to do here called Comedy Guy, uh, that was a little bit more focused on oftentimes about comedy and stagecraft and, and and production and the industry. And that's where it's like, okay, I've been doing that for more than a decade. I know everything about that. I could talk about that. You know, if you ask me to stand on a stage and talk about producing a live event, yeah, okay, I'll right. talk for three hours about it. No worries. It's it's right. It's what you so what you're talking about is this is what this is what we have done and what you've got to do. Anybody who's listening to this, and if you're in something and it's something you're passionate about, you need to try to do your best to become as good as you can at that field where you can talk about it. And learn to talk about it in a way that is open minded and doesn't make you sound crazy. Like you never say absolutes. OK, point. like I know a lot about CRTs, but I'm not going to say some absolute where, for an example, I don't know. And we might have even talked about this in the meeting uh, or the presentations. I was you know, open questions. And one of the questions I got, a lot of the questions I got would be like about strange situations that would just happen to our CRT based on. Uh, one of them was the fact that there was 60 built into a video wall and they all degaussed every day at the exact same time when you powered the switch on. Well, if you think the impact, it probably would f- flip off a Richter scale that was standing by, you know, that would give an earthquake yeah. jolt. It, you know, it's like that kind of a thing is something that you normally didn't think about. But then I would start looking. Um, I got that question and they're like, have you ever heard of a. Uh, Degaussing causing a tube to crack was what they placed it to me. It's how that's how they said the question initially. And so I was like, well, I'll be completely honest with you. I've never heard of that happening. Never heard of that happening. But I'm not going to say it couldn't happen. And I was like, what was your situation? And that was when they told me, well, it was this big video wall and all these were degaussing. And I was like, of course. Okay, now it makes sense. Plus, we just looked at this tube. It's a consumer set. There's a possibility the tube wasn't as great. It's not as good as any of those Sonys we just looked at. No way. It's like this is a consumer set tube. It probably did have a weak one and it did, popped right off. And I was, but I was at the same time, if, if they would have just asked that blank with a question and I would said, look, man, that's silly. No way. Never happened. What does that do? That makes him feel bad for asking the question, and it makes me feel like look like an ass because not only am I wrong, but I'm sitting up there saying that, you know, I know an absolute answer to something when I don't. So Humility. that is something that is like, you know, you got to be able to uh, do that because you're not going to know everything, right? You're going to get a question you don't know the answer to, even if you're an expert. So there's no, you actually look better and more human when you can talk your way and explain that, hey, I don't know. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Let's think maybe it did happen. How how could that happen? Sure. Uh, I tried to make my stuff mimic a lot of the great, <laughs> you know, the great entertaining uh, courses in college. Yeah, I'm not going to say nice. there were that many, but there sure. were probably a dozen times where you sat through a three-hour class and you were like, wow, I actually enjoyed my day going to my college course. It was actually really fun, informative, uh, and I feel really good about it. And it was, you know, right? You had a couple probably times like that. I'm sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah. So I was like, this is kind of what I want this to be. And uh, so I don't know. You know, I have hopes that that kind of a thing would still be valuable to people. And I think it is. And mm-hmm. um, 
So yeah, I think it's I good. Mean, your your like words got me way. thinking about actually. Uh, sorry, because I, I was lost for a moment in that that thought that you gave me, which was talking about. Uh, I mean, we've all had those those cool college professors who were able to present in entertaining ways or something like that, and uh, it actually made me think about this. Because I'm, I'm essentially kind of making a transition to video. I've done so much stage work. I've done for 10 years. I've been a comedian. I've been a host. I'm so used to standing on a stage and talking to people that even to to come and to do it on a video was, for a, at the first, a little bit constraining. If I stand in front of a group of people, I know how to, to speak, right? I could present and talk and, and hopefully make it energetic without just jumping off the walls and being a maniac. There's sort of those little things, but... All of a sudden on video, I don't have all of that anymore. And this is why stand-up comedians love live. And live is where it's at with real people in front of you and real reactions. And uh, when the pandemic came along, everyone was like, but just film it and live stream. We're like, nah, no, it's gonna (laughs) look dog shit they're like but i saw the bill burr comedy special i'm like yeah because he's got like eight cameras uh around there lighting a director and then it's all edited later to look nice and tight live a lot of money invested in that yeah a lot of money and professional video work goes goes in to making that look amazing to live stream a, a comedy show maybe if you had a couple of cameras and you were but it doesn't work like that like people and and so people didn't sort of they thought you could just put a uh, i saw it happening with bands a venue a few venues are like well we're just gonna put some cameras in and the band can play and we'll just film it and live stream i'm like oh i guess but it's not it so to learn how to communicate on video and how to you know express myself in video like this this is part of my discovery as well how to bring like you say how that cool college professor right how to bring that energy into a video. Uh, I'm getting there slowly. Yeah, so yeah. You, you've and got that something. as well. You've yeah, that. well, that's that's kind of like the goal thing. And it, I mean, hey, we're saying college. It's, a lot of people probably, it, if you not never went to college, I'm sure there was some teacher oh, sure. in your life mm. that, you know, you walked out after the day and you were like, that was awesome. And that really, um, you know, some people get inspired to become whatever in their life because of those kind of moments. And I'm not saying that like cockily, like, oh, yeah, I'm out here. I'm going to inspire you to do this. But that's, uh, you know, that's that's always been part because I never I never planned this. It's funny. You like run into a business, uh, Mm -hmm. but but now it becomes your business and your livelihood, because originally it was just about helping uh, people, helping get information out there. Um, And when you're passionate about doing that, you're going to try to find ways to connect with your audience right sure. so and that's and like you're saying um i think that the thing that's incredible about live stuff you get instant um feedback mm. and you get an instant reaction to something you present something whereas you present something on live stream you have no idea yeah. it could be a dry ass joke what are you going to get a, a chat that's going to say ha huh? <laughs> or lols right so And you're not going to feel that. Whereas if like it was like when I was in front of this classroom of X of of museum experts and I um, I was like, well, let's just grab this yoke and and let me show you a few things. And I loosened the yoke and then I just started wiggling it around and I was looking out at them and they were like like jaw dropping, like eyes looked like they had seen like, I don't know, you know, their first uh, whatever first. Mm hmm moment of opening your eyes it's like they were kind of blown away and so like that reaction and then that reaction keeps going right so you get that little uh, pop and then you're like oh yeah this is actually working my routine's going your routine you work at the crowd baby the crowd's going and you're like this next joke i'll put this little style even (laughs) a little bit more of myself into it and i'm really confident with what i'm doing i'm confident Mm. in who i'm being i'm confident right now and they're really liking it and it's like a given play with your audience. And uh, so that's exactly what we're talking about here in the performance realm. And there's a, it's, it's crazy because you'll look at people who are the best, uh, longest time YouTubers, and they've sat behind a camera. And I think that they would struggle with what we're talking about on the opposite end, where they're sure. not used to that feedback on a live audience level. And so then you get into the, you know, the whole public speaking fear kind of too mm. so it's that made me think about what um like what um even 
styles. Okay, so culture is my thing, living in different countries and how different cultures work. And Estonian people, general Eastern Europeans, very similar, not known for being wild audiences, not known for their outgoingness, you know, the stereotype of being shy and inward. And I had to learn to work that. And I had to learn to look to what to respond. You know, American audience, woo, yeah, yeah. you know, you're getting all this, you know, real, all that energy can come straight out. With the Estonian audience, it's a little bit about pulling it out of them and or understanding when they're enjoying it. And I saw it a lot when foreign comedians come here to Estonia, they think they're not doing well when actually they think that on their international scale, they're not getting enough reaction or laughter or something like this. And I can look at the audience, I'm going, they like it, dude. They're, they're into you. They are laughing. Listen to it. Um <laughs> And I had to do stand-up during the pandemic. I had to do, as I said, I don't like stand-up that's not properly filmed. But there are a few events like company events. So live stream just for a company. And I did like 15 or 20 minutes of stand-up uh, to a camera. And a few times I did it, I was like in their office. So what it would be for a company is maybe there was like 20 people in their office making the... Christmas live stream happen and then the couple of hundred employees were at home watching it on their screens and I mean so I've got my routine in this instance that you're not improving you are doing a routine that you have practiced so I do it down the camera but then we also uh, made sure that there was a few of the people from the company like around the camera so I could see them and they would you know even like three people smiling is better than a camera with nothing. You know, even three people yeah. smiling when I'd say the punchline was enough of a human emotional hit of endorphins in my brain that connected like, okay, yeah, that joke was funny enough. She smiled, good. We'll move on with the next bit. Um, yeah, audiences. Oh, oh, because I know I'm going on and on about stuff here. <laughs> Because I was watching earlier today, I was watching a stand-up clip. So there is comedy happening in the Ukraine right now. There's really um, Ukraine. Ukraine had stand-up. Sure, it's a country that had stand-up. Well, sure. And they're still now. Kiev is somewhat not. I wouldn't say returning to normal, but people are going about their lives, and they yeah. are actually doing stand-up. And I can definitely attest that stand-up is something that can help people deal with trauma when we laugh when you make light of it, when you make jokes about it, it's cathartic for the comedian. Uh, I know I've talked to, I think on this podcast, I've talked about the yes. ways that I've seen trauma-filled yeah. comedians go to the stage and deliver these amazing performances, but also for the audience. They're sharing that moment, sharing that. And so stand-up is happening right now in Ukrainian, in Kiev. And there's a, a, a Ukrainian comedian who's been doing, he's put two out now. They're about 15 minutes each of him, he's written like 15 minutes of material in the last two months about the war. And he's doing it in literally a bomb shelter in Kiev. And it's amazing. Like his English is very accent, but yeah. cool. And he's got jokes and it works. And first of all, that's really interesting. I was fascinated by it to hear him. And, you know, he's making jokes about Russians and Putin and all this. And just their like, you know, jokes about the bomb flying overhead and stuff like this and... And so that was amazing to see him talk about his life through stand-up you comedy are, and that now we've got this, right. yeah. he can do that. But also um, something that probably only a, a stand-up comedian would notice. Um, there's a, in let's say Russian culture, Slavic culture, like I'm not putting Ukrainians and Russians together, but in that, let's say Slavic kind of culture thing, when they watch stand-up, they applaud way more. Like, it's their thing. Like, they don't laugh. Like, Americans will be like, ah, da, yeah, 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 kind of thing. <laughs> what Slavic people do is they clap. So, after everything. So, it all, and I, I'm watching this clip and it's almost breaking up his flow, but he must be used to it. Like, he does a line. It's a good line. We should laugh a lot, but everything that is remotely funny gets an applause and as a Western style of stand-up, it really felt a little bit jarring, like a little bit stop-start. But I've also understood that's how culturally what they do. Uh, so anyway, you yeah. You have just, to adjust to that pacing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so, you can be good at it. Like you say, you could be uh, amazing at it if you adjust the pacing to it. 
and work with it. But mm. yeah, that's, uh, you know, going back to the Ukrainian comedian, look, it's a traumatic situation. You have to remember how to laugh, yeah. right? Or you'll be going mm. insane. It's like you cannot, it's like crying. It's like anything. You cannot... I've watched too many people like try to block out a single emotion uh, from their life, whether it's because they had some unbelievably traumatic uh, event happen in their life and they never want to go think about it again or um, anything, you know, that just really is emotionally heavy. And, you know, you don't want to, you know, men, oh, you know, you shouldn't cry for generations. It was like, don't cry. And that's a mistake. You know, it's going to yeah. like, it's it's not saying you have to be a crybaby or whatever you know it's sure. but the release of all this is therapeutic so being able people being able to go through months of trauma and then having an opportunity to take one moment of relief mm. from it and laughing it off um is important and it reminds us why we're human right it's not sure. because you know and that's a connection uh, where he wants to make people around him feel better too because mm. they're all mm. going through terrible stuff together right and uh yeah he's he's it's doing something for him it's doing something for the audience uh, when he puts it on youtube it's doing something for ukraine uh the last bit of get a hundred thousand views you know the this one will probably get more so uh he's because uh, uh, even i thought to myself i'm like Hey, Kiev's not that far away. We got to get this guy up to Estonia to do a live show. You know, we got. Yeah, you might need to. Yeah, if maybe. you can. I went into the shop shipping something the other day, and it gave me the, they gave me this list of, and it just reminded me of all this stuff. It just gave me a list of places I can't ship to. Mm, you know, okay, and it's, yeah. of course it's Ukraine, uh, Russia, and like Afghanistan. No way, never, right now, no mm. how. So it's like, golly, man, you still just can't even send stuff there mm. um, but then Crix is still sending stuff out of uh, right, ukraine like, well is he in is he in ukraine or is he in spain i don't know where i didn't know whether he had officially moved the production. right so as as i understood um as we were saying before trying to not be the to to learn how to be definite oh, right, as right. i understood well, we he originally left out. ukraine because yeah. he had a family i think over three or something like that if you had over three you're allowed to leave because you got to with your family, you're allowed to to be refugees from Ukraine um, because you've got a family to look after. However, right. I think then after, I don't know, at some stage, then they said no men are allowed to leave Ukraine if you're from fighting age. I don't understand the exact details of that rule. Um, so at one stage, he was in Spain, as I understood. And I don't understand, has he gone back to the Ukraine or not? But I do right. know that he's got his factory that the or the little setup there. The guys that set up in a like a university building. That's what I was wondering if that was in Ukraine or if that was in if that was in a sport part of Ukraine, which would make more sense because how are you going to get all that tooling? Yeah, that was still in Ukraine. They'd move. That's what it I mean. To how like, could you? Because you can't get that uh, tooling. Part. Right, so you can't get that tooling out of the country. So he had know. his um, guys there. So he's got yeah, a team. It's okay. not just him. He's got a team. So yeah, most oh of yeah. those guys had to stay. Um, so they were still there. I'm not sure of his current status, whether he's in I was Ukraine looking, or not. I was looking to try to like just look at some... Because st it's like he'll put out a notice on Twitter. Hey, I've got some stock of some items. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I'll go a day later and look at everything's, of course, out of stock. Because, and I'm just like, this is... But it's still cool because then sometimes he'll say it. And if I check it quick enough... It'll still be available uh, mm. for sale. Like he just announced the last day or two, some stock items were in. And what else? He had. Um, he's got a new project. Did you see that? The RGB blaster. Yeah. Which one? Mm. The, the RGB Famicom. blaster. Yeah, the, the Famicom, Famicom RGB. Blaster. That looks amazing. That's so cool. Yeah, that's. I was so like, what is this even thinking. doing? But yeah, it's just. So it's getting you RGB without modifying your console, and it's like a plug-in thing. It looks like an adapter. Like the mm. Famicom to NES cart adapter style. Mm. It's just plug in between those two. Uh, I never even had one of those consoles, the Famicom style ones. That's but, the Japanese one. Yeah. yeah that but there's tons style. of those around. Like in, in Japan, Japan, they were, I think they're a dime a dozen. They're millions of them. Millions and millions. I've got a bunch in my storage room because they're so cheap. Uh, yeah. So that, that original Japanese style, which cool. then was made the, when they brought it to America, they redesigned it as the toaster. Uh, instead 
And I didn't get to get in on the uh, his special. It was way sold out. It was oversold. <laughs> yeah. His special in 64 cart, because that's the one I don't actually have anymore. And I was like, oh, mm. maybe I can. Oh, no. It's, it's got the, the website sold it two and a half times over, <laughs> over accidentally. So I was like, well, I have to wait uh, to get another one of those. That's literally the only one I don't um, have any uh, anything okay. for is the N64. But okay. Have you got your N64 set up? I, no, I've just been playing on it like to test S video and composite out of it a lot. Okay. And then so I've been going back and instead of just I've been trying to actually play games like when I finish a monitor, I try mm. to go play a game. That's nice. So I've been playing a lot of the Super Nintendo. I've been playing a lot of NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Dumb. But I've gotten I've been saving like my profile and I've gotten to where it's too hard now, man. The team's just like like swat you. And steal and score like twenty points in like ten seconds. And it's oh, because like you're so advanced in the game. Yeah, because yeah. I've been like keeping my role going, and <laughs> it's like you're top ranked, and now it's just like impossible. So I get so mad, I want to like chuck the controller, and I've got to <laughs> like I've got to find a new game now. I can't do this one, because then I could actually get into it, you know, and be like ah, you know, and play a whole twenty minute little game on there. So I've been mm-hmm. trying to do that with more stuff, and I've been playing the very first uh, wrestling game. Ras- we've been talking about wrestling. It was WCW uh, World Tour. Oh, that was uh, the first one, wasn't on, it? Well, it was the first good one on the N64. Okay. So I've got mm-hmm. one of those here. And so I've been going back and just like ripping through the championship mode to like beat the champs with like stupid characters challenging myself. Guys that are like, they were cool then. They're like 60 now or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like you were saying it's their sons. Are, that are coming yeah, up. like now it's their sons who are in there, but. Yeah, so that's kind of, I the the um, so that's made me want to play like the other wrestling games that are actually old, later on and better. And then I've been reading that people have done like fan translations and hacks on some of these to make them even better. And I would like to play those versions of them of the wrestling. Okay, so to, the like, ROM card would be needed for that. Yeah, to, for that one. That. Unless you want to emulate it, uh, which I don't really have set up for anything like that. And that's not something that I've heard anything about on the Mister Front right the what sorry the n64 no apparently it's well they say everything's impossible but there's right, impossible it, impossible saturn was impossible else. but n64 sure. is impossible 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 well uh, i had somebody tell what, me that cps3 and 2 were going to come because the core is like identical to the saturn core so all you you have a bunch more arcade games coming soon mm-hmm. uh thanks to that core so yeah i haven't I went and updated. That's actually something I did. I went and updated. It took forever. My Mister K this week, but oh yeah, okay. It's, it's if you haven't updated for a while, that'll yeah. tell you. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Well, what do you think? We done oh, with good. the first episode Thank of you. Lewis. Thank you everyone for Lewis listening and, through. I enjoyed this one. We just told the Lewis and Nuthead too. show. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of something cooler than like just my name, Lewis. Like, but it just fit Beavis it Lewis. Fit. Like, like, it like it fits Beavis the thing. So Zez, like I was like Zezus Zez. Zez, Zez, Zez. I was like, ah, just, just to Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, yeah, nice. Thank you, everyone, Thanks, everybody, for, for for tuning in. We'll uh, tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Steve. All right, see you.